we have an iPad 2. Now, when we scroll to the second page, you'll notice a variety of educational apps. And then up in the top left corner, we have iBooks. And so this is iBooks 2, the second version of iBooks that Apple launched earlier today. And if you go to your library, we have a, a variety of sample books here. So starting in the top left corner, we have Life on Earth, Biology, Chemistry, Dinosaurs, Algebra 1, another biology book from a different publisher, another Algebra 1 book, you can't get enough algebra, and then uh, Mammals. So this is a, a sampling of books that you would probably use in elementary school, possibly middle school. Uh, obviously, there will be many more textbooks available, ranging in price up to $14.99. Now some of these textbooks, even the samples that we have on here, take up quite a bit of space. So this biology book, for example, uh, tips the, the scale at just shy of 3 gigabytes. So I think it's something like 2.75 gigabytes, uh, which is pretty substantial for, for any application or, or book or even a, a video file uh, that you have on your iPad, given that you have you know 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of storage on this iPad here. So if you expect to do a lot of textbook reading on your iPad, you're going to want to opt for the, the larger 64 gigabyte version. And uh, I assume that the iPad 3, when that comes about, will offer higher capacities in order to, to deal with these larger uh, textbook file sizes. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the chemistry book here. And so it takes a few seconds to load. Uh, we're at about, what was it, five seconds or so. And each book has a, a quick intro video uh, when you first launch it. And so you don't have to watch it. We'll, we'll play for a few seconds. But obviously this isn't ideal for a classroom environment where if, if everyone launches the book, um, you're going to have quite a bit of noise. So let's go ahead and skip ahead. Here we are. So we're chapter one. There's a few different ways to navigate. You can either flick right and left, just as you would in a current iBook. Uh, and then down here, since we have chapters in a textbook, you have uh, a sampling, some thumbnails of the pages within each chapter. And so you can skip ahead to different chapters by tapping on these little dots here on the bottom. And then once you're within a chapter, uh, sorry, if, if you're clicking on the chapter page, the, the sub cover, uh, and flicking the chapter, the chapter page there, uh, it'll actually cycle through the chapters. Uh, if you're on an individual page and you flick right or left, it'll bring you through the pages within that chapter. And so the, the pages are, are fairly multimedia rich. Uh, on this one we have two columns with photos, and then if you notice here, uh, right there on the bottom there's three dots and you can actually cycle through uh, photos in a gallery here. You can click to enlarge, you can then zoom in further if you want, you can twist them, you can you know interact with them just as you would any other image on your iPad. It's always going to go right back where it belongs though. Another very cool feature is tapping and you can actually tap and hold to highlight text. And so if we highlight text like that you can either hit highlight, note, or search. And if you search, uh, you're probably going to want to do that for a word, maybe two words. It's going to look in the textbook for that terms, uh, for that sentence rather. So it brought us right back here to page 767. And we'll go back over here. And so once you highlight text, I'll go ahead and do that. And then we can change the color of the highlight, or we can add a note here. So you would just type in a note. Let's say this is a note, and then your note will actually live right here on the page. And so it's indicated by a little icon there. If you tap on that, you'll see your note. So instead of highlighting or making notes on the side of, of your paper textbook, you can actually do that, have a similar experience right here on the uh, digital version of the textbook. And so we can, of course, enlarge any image. You can throw it back in by, by pinching out. Uh, or you can hit this, this X right here in the top. But then when you maximize it like that, you actually get a uh, caption here on the bottom. And if it's a copyrighted photo, it'll bring up the, the photo copyright as well. Okay, and so you can't really do anything with, with these vocab words that they have uh, besides define them, essentially. So um, if, you, if you tap on a single word rather than a sentence, and highlight that word, you can get a definition right there. And so you don't need to, to cycle through different apps in order to 
you know, to pull up a definition to a word inside the textbook. So that's pretty handy. Uh, there's a variety of multimedia as well. And so it doesn't look like this is active, but ah, here we go. We, so we have a little animation there. Let's see if we can maximize that. There we go. And so I am going to, there you go, it's, it's playing right there. And so it's a simple animation, not a video file. If you can imagine, if you had a lot of video files uh, in each of these textbooks, it would take up even more space than, than the three gigabytes that it does now. So we can play these animations. So they're, they're simple, uh, several frames to each of the animations there. And then, again, you can maximize that way. Okay, and let's go back out to the library. And let's go ahead and check out, uh, say, Algebra 1. And so, again, the first time you launch a book, you'll get a, a quick intro video that only happens the first time. When you go back out to the bookshelf and, and relaunch a book, it'll bring you exactly back to, to the place that you left off. So we can skip through this animation. Uh, and then navigate the same way here by tapping on the bottom. And so tapping once on the uh, on the actual book on the sub page here will bring up this table of contents, uh, basically an in index of pages on the bottom. And so you can scroll through these pages here, or you can flick through the uh, the chapter uh, sub pages here as well. Obviously, you're, you're dealing with many, many pages in the textbook, so navigation is, is key. So let's go ahead and back out and take a look at some of these apps. So frog dissection. Um, obviously, this, this can't really compete with the experience that you'd have in a lab, but... Place the specimen in the dissection <laughs> pan. You can, you can have a virtual experience here. Select the pins from the tools. So let's go ahead and pin some pan limbs. To keep the frog in place. All right. Select the marker from the tools. Use the marker to draw a horizontal line and a vertical line on the specimen. So you don't really even need any teachers in, in your science class if you're just following instructions on the iPad. Except when it's not. Uh, here we go. All right. Select the scissors from tools. Let's see. I really want to get this guy open. So let's let's see if if maybe we can get there. above the forelimbs. Now make another horizontal incision above the hind And obviously, if, if you forget how to, uh, to open up a frog, you can always go back and revisit this, even at home. Raise it outward slowly. So you don't have to be in the classroom. There we go. Oh, man. You don't have to be in the classroom to actually dissect an animal. incision on the muscle along the midline. Take care not to cut too deep. Select the forceps. I don't think it knew how deep I was cutting. All right, so there, there you go. That's just an example there. Uh, we have a guide to the solar system here as well. You can go back to the gallery. Uh, actually, this, this gallery just gives a bunch of different images. Um, hit done. And then we just want to get home. Here we go, home. So this will bring you to the, uh, the solar system. And you can click on, say we want to take a look at Earth. And tap Earth, and then you get a 360-degree view of the Earth. And then you can zoom in. Uh, this isn't high res, so when we zoom in, we don't we don't get that much detail. This isn't really Google Earth, um, but it's it's a, a decent overview of the solar system, definitely. And so this is obviously a lot more fun to use than an ordinary, uh, you know, piece of paper. So this is actually showing the planet's placement in the solar system. Pretty nifty. All right, so uh, that should do it. it it'll give you a, just a brief overview of how iBooks 2 and the new apps work. Uh, if you've 